okay. Pick them back up. The way that I do these videos is I kind of record them in chunks, and I don't really go back and listen to them until I hit some kind of stopping point I feel comfortable at. And so I went back and I watched the previous two videos after I had uploaded them to YouTube, and some kind of volume audio crap going on, so I'm pretty sure I fixed that. So hopefully it'll be better. I actually lowered the mic volume a little bit too, so hopefully that'll help alleviate some of the problems. Uh, I'm not using a super high quality mic, as I'm sure you figured out by now, but uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go back up here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change new mem. So what is Alec doing? As we talked about, Alec is allocating 4K memory, and it's assigning it to some label of new mem. And you see new mem here, and you see new mem down here. I don't like calling it new mem just because, just because I don't. What I do like calling it is chunk zero. So uh, why do I call it chunk zero? Because I'm inherently zero based. Just as sort of a programmer, I start from zero. And then I work up from there, so then I'll do one, and then two, and then three, but I always start at zero. And why do I call it chunk? Because it's a chunk of memory. I could call it block zero. Um, I call it whatever the hell I want, but I like chunk zero. It sounds funny. It's like if I was some crazy R&B guy, I would be called chunk zero. Anyway. So, we're going to change the name of Alex to chunk zero. Do we have to make any other modifications? No, because we're rewriting this bottom part, the original script. We're rewriting that, and we haven't referred to chunk zero up in the top yet, but we're about to. So let's do that. So what do we have here? We're going to label this chunk zero. Chunk zero. So what does that mean? As you can see down here, um, the original Cheat Engine script, what it's doing is it's creating a label. It's calling it original code. This is the line we're focus, focusing on right now. Creating a label, calling it original code, and then the way that it defines or associates instructions with the label of original code is with a, set, or with a uh, colon, and then the instructions follow. And then there's another label with another colon, more instructions, yada, yada, yada. So how do we associate instructions with, or content, or in, let's say content, that's a more generic term. How do we associate content with chunk zero? It's easy. Just do that. Now, the assembler script of Cheat Engine, or Cheat Engine in general, does not impose any sort of, it does not impose many syntax um rules on you as you write code. However, I like to indent by two for, you know, we'll just say whatever more of whatever. So when I'm writing code and I'm sort of like associating, you know, like whatever, I, whatever is, I can't say whatever's below whatever, but the content of this block of code that I am sort of commenting and saying that I'm calling it whatever. This content is associated with chunk zero. So I like to indent it twice, just as sort of a visual indication of this is associated with whatever is above it. That is a, not something that is unique to me. Many programming, or what I say many, almost all programming languages enforce some, they don't enforce it, but Almost all programming languages encourage some kind of behavior similar to that. Basic basic white space indentation. So let's keep going here. Or let's, let's just go over this one more time because this is incredibly important. What are we doing here? We are allocating 4K of memory. 4 kilobytes of memory. We are giving it some label, chunk zero. Now, we haven't even gotten to what is contained within chunk zero yet, and we're already declaring labels. How is that possible? Because all this stuff up here, the label declaring or declarations, is sort of a preprocessor kind of thing. 
where the cheat engine is parsing and reading the script and saying, all right, you know, there's a, it's not even so much cheat engine, but well, we're just going to call it cheat engine. Cheat engine is reading the labels and it's sort of creating entries for entry increase karma, entry decrease karma, process increase karma, process decrease karma, return increase, return decrease. And it's sort of pre-declaring those or pre Again, this is, this is, I know what I want to say when I'm talking about this stuff, but I don't want to, I can't say it because it'll just use a whole lot of words that are meaningless, but it, by using the label declarations up here, it's sort of letting Cheat Engine know, here's a, here is some name that I want to associate with some value or some content. I don't know what that content is yet. I haven't declared that content, but Reserve this name for my use. Similar to how you would say x equals 5, as we talked about with variables. The only difference is that x could equal some huge chunk of assembly instructions. Or in the case of chunk 0, chunk 0 could equal more labels, more instructions, more labels within that, more instructions, more labels within that, so on and so forth. There's just... It's a super generic way of indicating content associated with some name. So let's bring this up here. All right, so we're going to keep rewriting this. We have chunk zero. We can actually get rid of this here. We're not going to, but if we wanted to, we could delete that. But again, we're, we are rewriting everything that's highlighted right here in, in my style or in a more, what I consider a more understandable way up top. So chunk zero used to be new mem. So new mem, we've declared chunk zero with a colon, new mem, colon. What are we doing down here? What is original code? Original code roughly equates to the, our entry functions. So let's basically say entry, entries. We'll just make it plural. So how are we going to define them? It's really quite simple. Say entry, increase, karma, colon, Done. Now we just type stuff. We could we could do not if we wanted to. Let's do that. Say entry decrease karma. Not. Now we have our process, and then we will have our returns. Uh, actually, we won't have our returns, but we'll certainly have the process. So, what are we doing here? What we're saying is that. Whenever the entry increase karma function, or whenever entry increase karma is jumped to, that's that's what we're going to start calling this. Instead of functions, whenever entry increase karma is jumped to, the instructions that we are indenting here will be associated with this label. So you could do anything you want. You could do not, uh, not. Then you could do more not. You could do more not. You could move, you know, I don't know, EAX. You can move zero into EAX. Why would you want to do that? I don't know, but you could if you wanted to. What you're really going to do is you're going to jump. So how can we sort of segue into jump? It's really it's really quite easy. If we can bring up this, go to Cheat Engine Help, go to Tutorials, give me Hex Theory, uh, Conditionals, and Jumps. What the hell are flags? We'll get to that. But here are a list of the opcodes for jumps. Gives you all the jumps that you can do. Is this going to give us sort of a more of a explicit exp or explicit explanation? That's probably not a good way to frame that. Um, if I have to, or if we have to, we will define it ourselves. But I'm kind of hoping that there's a more basic. Yeah, see, that, that talks about it in the context of EIP. I don't want to do that. I want more of a generic way to talk about jump. Let's ask Wikipedia.
In assembly language, the JMP or jump instruction performs an unconditional jump. Such, such an instruction transfers the flow of execution by changing the instruction pointer register. We're going to just chop off the last, this whole part of that sentence. Such an instruction transfers the flow of execution, period. And that's all we're going to say about that. There are many different forms of jumps, relative, conditional, absolute, register, and direct. Um, da -da -da -da. So what do we mean by jump? Let's see if we can maybe sort of bring this back to, uh, that's not what we want to do. Come on, come there we go. So what does it mean when you jump? Well, let's look at um, the assembly code that uh, Cheat Engine is, is providing us here. See if we can find a jump. I'm sure it's very, very, very common. There's J and G. I don't want to deal with any conditionals yet. Let's just look for a jump. Regular JMP. Euler. There you go. Jump. So here's a jump instruction. Jump short. We're not going to bother dealing with jump short or anything like that. So what does this mean? When the processor is sort of iterating through this series of instructions and it encounters a jump, what it does is it transfers control of the application to wherever it's jumping to. So there's sort of an implicit assumption that when you are jumping from, or that you, let's rephrase that. There's an implicit assumption that when you are jumping to something that it can handle the sort of uh, program flow or the control flow or the execution path, however you want to say it, of the application. So when you jump to, you know, the XOR EDI EDI, and then you get down here and you hit a jump and it says jump to 1932 ED71, what does that mean? It means basically skip everything in between wherever I am now and that address and just immediately go there and start executing instructions or in logic where you know as is defined at this address and you can see that cheat engine in, in very sort of not very but in some general circumstances cheat engine will sort of point you in the right direction and give you little green hyphens and things like that and you can see 1932 ed71 well you know where the hell is that if you look over here it's it's you know we're really not that far off you see the green line you follow the green line down and there it says 1932 ed71 you know, so what does it mean when you jump 1932ED71? It's basically saying skip every goddamn thing in between that and this. And I'm just going to resume execution of the application right here. And then, so I'm going to move this into EAX. Then I'm going to move that into EAX. Then I'm going to compare EAX, EDI. Then I'm going to do some other conditional stuff over here. And basically, you'll pretty much never get back to any of this or I'm not going to say never, but a jump is basically a transfer of control from the application or from the context, from the calling context, the parent context is a more technical way to say it. When you're jumping an assembly, you are saying, I no longer want or need control of the application from the context in which I'm jumping. And I want to immediately start executing logic, instructions, whatever you want to say, from where I'm jumping to. So why, why are the jumps so important? Why am I sort of beating this to death? Because what Cheat Engine does when you make scripts is it just sort of, not sort of, but let's close this real quick. Kind of running out of time, so I'm going to see if I can maybe hustle this along. What Cheat Engine does when you create scripts is it code injects right on the instruction you tell it to and then it jumps to your to the first or to the location of memory that you allocated it executes your scripts and then when you return such as with the return increase karma it immediately jumps back to the instruction following where you code injected and maybe we will elaborate on this more in the next video